Welcome back to Castle Class Presents Roll 20. I'm your guide, Corey Longnecker. This is class number nine, um, which I alluded to at the end of last class, where we are going to be dealing with a really cool uh, API and macro. Um, we already installed it, it's token mod, but what it allows us to do is wild shape for our druids. Uh, allows them to switch between the various tokens. Um, it will require a little bit of setup, and that's the only downside to it. And then as the player wants to add things to it, they're going to have to run it by the GM or DM and or whoever's in control of the account, uh, the, the Roll20 Pro account, and they're going to have to make the changes. Um, but once you set it up, it's it's iterative, and it's really easy to add stuff to it. So... Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so I've already spun everything up, so let's go ahead and kick off into our game here. I've already installed Token Mod last class. If you have questions about how to install the APIs and how to add the macros, uh, check out our earlier videos. They will be extremely helpful for you. So let me make this a little bit easier for everybody to see and then we will get going because the stuff you need to go with. Okay, so I've just got a pretty cool background here. Just wanted to, to put that out there. So there's gonna be a lot of steps going on here. Um, first things first, let's go ahead and add the macro just so we know that it's in there and we can go ahead and do that. So I will provide the code in the description below and you can go ahead and do that. So if we go in here and I've just turned these off so you can so you don't have to see them. We're going to add a macro. I'm going to call it wild shape. And let me bring in the code here. And I'll explain a couple things in this code because this is kind of helpful um, and it may be useful to you. Okay. Before we get there, I do want to do this and we're going to have it visible to the player who's playing the druid. In this case, I'm the only one in here, so it's going to be me, but you want it to be whoever is playing that druid um, and the GM so that if they're having problems, you can go ahead and change it for them. Or if you create a druid and want a wild shape as an NPC or an enemy or something like that, you can you can also have those abilities um, down the road. So a couple of things in here. You'll see up here there's a, a whisper command. That's what the slash W means. Whisper to the GM the name of the character, um, wills himself to transform. So that's just going to drop in chat and tell you that that character has decided to, to wild shape. Um, here's the call to token mod and you'll see in here there's several forms. Um, I've already preloaded these things. Giant toad, giant hyena, dire wolf, reef shark, and then the player character themselves. A um, couple other things that are interesting. Bar 1 is linked to speed, bar 2 is linked to hit points, and bar 3 is linked to AC. The way I run my games, I like to have, that's the setup I like for those bars. Bar 1 is speed, bar 2 is hit points, and bar 3 is armor class. So, you may need to rearrange those based on how you want yours set up. Um, and going back to the healing potion, you want to keep that standard throughout. So if you're using hit points in bar 2, you want to make sure that bar 2 is hit points all the time. Um, so keep that there and you'll see that there's these things called current sides. Um, as you add more shapes for your druid to wild shape into, make sure to add those uh, numerically. So one, two, three, four, five, six, you can just keep going indefinitely. Um, you'll also see here these widths, two times 70. Uh, as a giant uh, monster, it takes up 140 which is twice the normal. Normal is 70 pixels. They take up, they're a large creature, so they take up twice that. So that's why it's two times 70. So if you had a giant creature, three times 70, um, so on and so forth. And you'll see here Quill, our character, is only at 70, 70. So that's what all those things mean. Um, really, you can just do a lot of copying and pasting with this, and you'll be okay. So let's go ahead and save that. And let's add it to the bar so that we've got it down there. Um, you can't quite see it right now. Let me bring it up so you can. There you go. Um, that will come into effect here in a minute. The next thing we need to do is bring all of these character sheets into the game. So I have the monster manual here. Um, so I can go into monsters. And I'm just going to grab, grab these things real quick. So we need a dire wolf 
Where is Dire Wolf? There's Dire Wolf. We need a Dire Wolf. We need a giant, a couple giant things. Let's go with. Oh, what do we have? Giant Toad and a giant hyena. There's our giant hyena. There's our giant toad. And let's do a reef shark as well. And there's our reef shark. So by pulling these in, um, they are now here in the journal. I've created a folder called Wild Shape, and I like to just move these um, into it. Makes it a little bit easier to keep things organized. So that's just what I do there. Um, and then what we're going to do next is start going through and um, create the rollable table because that's going to be extremely necessary next. So. Back into uh, the collection, you'll see down here we have rollable table. We're going to create a rollable table in here. I'm going to click then on new table. We're going to rename it wild shape. We do want players to be able to roll from it, so we do that. And then we're going to um, get ready to add stuff. So I've switched here to the gallery. I've created a folder here called wild shape where I've added tokens for the various things that I want. So I've gone through, pulled these tokens out, or pulled the, the images of the tokens out, and then re-added them back here uh, because I'm going to need them. I'm not going to go through that step. You can right-click, save, figure out how to do all that, bring them back. Again, I create a folder here for all my wild shapes. We're going to start by adding. So let's start with, in the order we have, a giant toad. Now it's important to keep the names identical because what you have in the macro is going to look to this table to pull. So make sure the names are the same. And we're going to pull this image in here and we're going to leave it. We don't need to worry about the weight. Um, that doesn't come into effect here. So we can just ignore that for now. And we're going to keep adding these things. So next is the giant hyena. Save it. Then we have the dire wolf. And then we have the reef shark. And then we have the character. And we save the changes. So we now have a rollable table with multiple wild shapes. Okay, so now what we need to do is bring this character into the game and do this. Now, if you just drag the character sheet over from your character, it's not going to work. You need to go to the rollable table and click token. And it's going to create a new token here. Here's the important part and where not to get confused. You need to right click on it and under multi-sided, you're going to choose the side and drag your bar until you find the player character token. Now you have that part. You can double click on this and you're going to assign it to the character sheet that you want. And I'm gonna go ahead and drop these things down in here like I did. So I go with speed first, just so you can see it. Speed first, then hit points, and then AC. And I'm going to save the changes. See, so here's Quill. He's got all his things. So far, so good. Last thing you want to check is right click on that token and under advanced, make sure that is drawing is not highlighted. That's an important step. You want to make sure that it's not highlighted. It wouldn't let you select it anyhow, but it's just something that I ran into when I first started doing this. So at this point, Quill should be able to wild shape. So if you click on Quill's token and then click on the wild shape button, it's going to pop up. Uh, a drop down menu and you can choose. Want to go to a giant toad? Quill is now a giant toad. State clicked, go to a giant hyena. It's now a giant hyena and it keeps the name so you know that it's Quill and not a giant hyena. Um, and you can just keep going when you're ready to go back to Quill. You select Quill and Quill is back. Um, one thing you will need to do that is uh, 
helpful to you. And because they're through Wild Shape, players retain their um, charisma, their intelligence, and their wisdom. You're going to want to go into the journals of all of the Wild Shapes, their attributes and abilities, and you're going to want to find, and this is cumbersome, but it's, it's necessary, you're going to want to find the um, stats for charisma, intelligence, and wisdom, and set them equal to the, that of the player. So that if there's a save when you're as the wild-shaped animal or beast, um, it's going to be as the player's save. The strength, dexterity, and constitution remain whatever they are for the dire wolf or the hyena. So it's a little cumbersome at that point having to search through here. Um, it's not straightforward in Roll20, but you'll want to go through each of those and, and reset those. And basically, you're back in business. You now have a, a really cool feature for your druid where they can wild shape into just completely different things. Um, and you'll see their hit points change and their speed changes. And it's just a really neat, uh, it's a really neat function. And yeah, so you'll see here that this doesn't pop up and that's because it's under hit points here, it's not there. If you happen to drop that there, you'll see that it does populate. Um, yeah, so there you go. That's a uh, quick and easy way to add a really cool function to your game for druids. Um, so that's going to conclude class nine. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I will get to them as quickly as possible. Um, I believe next class is going to be our last class, class 10, where I'm going to be talking about a really cool add-in for Firefox or Chrome, um, that, that does some really cool stuff with D&D Beyond. So stay tuned and I will see you soon.